Hello everyone, welcome back. This will be the last video for this week, example 4. Now we have a table here and few question written here find the following requirement A, B, C, D, E. And let's say the table will be shown as this manner. So we want the table to be this manner. I want to find those results A, B, C, D, each of them an E. They're asking a question. And the final result will look something like this. So it's a simple table. We just want to know some result of pass, fail, reset, no reset, makeup, any things that we want to know. But the question is written here. So first I prepare the table in Excel and I'm gonna let's say copy the let's just copy the table I have it. So I'm gonna just bring the questions to answer them what do we want I'm gonna just paste them somewhere in the table Now let's say those are the questions we're going to answer them. The long questions. Okay. Starting from A. It says that this is going to be A for me. Okay. A. In column beside chemistry, write a function. For each student to check if the student passed the two given course and look passed the two given courses passing grade grade a equal to 50 use pass or fail for the outcome I have two outcome when a function will be used but what do I have to check I have to check if the student passed the two given course so if a student passed math and chemistry then I will write pass so this is what we call it call this one and why because both condition both values must be greater than 50 or equal to 50 in order for us or for in order to outcome to be pass so this is I cannot use or here because if a student passed one of the course but failed the other one the result will show as pass I don't want like this I want it to be both of them to be greater than this one then I will write pass if not fail so I realize that they have two condition two output one if function I'm still using one if now the logical test here I need to know this one to be greater or equal to 50 and I need to know this one to be greater or equal to 50 remember this is how we're writing logic yes but I cannot leave them like this because this will be logic, this will be value of true. And I need both of them to be true at the same time. So I'm going to put them inside and function. So and function I can use it. Then I'm closing the parenthesis here. Now you realize that all of this is a logical test. If both of them true, then Excel is going to come. Excel is going to come here. And if both of them true, what does it mean? this is greater than 50 this is greater than 50 or equal I mean the student pass then I'm gonna write pass there if one of the conditions are not true because in end both of them must be true yes so how many possibilities do I have it here maybe one pass chemistry but failed in pass chemistry but fail in the mass still fail maybe one Pass chemistry but fail oh fail in the chemistry pass in the math still fail fail in both of them that's fail fail so that's why we use and in the beginning only if both of them true then I will pass if not we're gonna say this is fail and we're closing the parenthesis quotation mark in the parenthesis let's just fail here and hit enter 
it's going to tell you that the student passed. Use autofilling for the rest of the student. You realize that the rest of the student, most of them fail. Even though this is chemistry 96, but technic math fail. This is fail. This two of them pass, path. Two of them fail, fail. Pass, fail, still fail. Fail, fail, show again we fail. True, true, it's going to be pass. I mean, that you can say like this true, true is true. The only one is be true is both of them true. If both of them true, then we'll go for the first one here, pass. If not, it's going to go for fail. I can do this one. I can do this one. So, for the solution, is it? This is a solution. This is a solution. But I'll extend it maybe in another way. I can call it method one. I can call this one method two. Now in method two, what do I say? What do I say? If this time I'm gonna use or I say how can I use or here? Or here it's a bit tricky, is I'll say if this one is less than 50 or this one less than 50 the student is failed well you can call it failed like this will be better but they say fail if none of them true look if none of them true what does none of them true means here in this condition mean none of them smaller than 50 means they are 50 or greater than 50 which gonna be pass i need you to understand how i'm thinking or how do i even say it this is how you know how to solve the problem or like at least find a solution i'll say that if i, I use or yes in english the or comes in between them but i'm in in excel or comes in the beginning you say if g6 is smaller than 50 or h6 is smaller than 50 i mean that you can say it like this if this value is smaller than 50 or this value is smaller than 50 well, i mean any of them smaller than 50 I mean, that's what or means any of them smaller than 50 it is fail because if if any of them true excel sending it where excel sending it here if any of those true that's what is it so the condition if this is true gonna come here if this is true still gonna come here if both of them true, both of them true, still gonna come here. So how many true I have? One. Maybe this true. Maybe only this one true. Maybe two of them true. Still gonna come here. In one condition, if none of them, if none of them true, I mean both of them false, then it's gonna come here. So two false. False, false. I mean two false. Then it's gonna come here because if it's two true still gonna go go to the first one one true gonna come here one true gonna come here so the true doesn't matter maybe this one true maybe this one true only one condition goes there when both of them are less both of them are greater than 50. that's what does it means here not some like smaller than 50 smaller than 50 means that if it is not true means it's greater than 50. It depends how you're thinking for the solution, but I'm supposed to get the same result. Remember, it doesn't matter what you do. I can still combine them two things more. I can still get the same answer. But I'm not going to go further. That's enough. Go for result B. B, what does it say? So that in column beside requirement A, write a function to find average of the student who passed the two cores and uh, to find to find average for the student who passed the co two courses and to write mistake reset for the student who failed. Now, let's say that I'm going to use two methods here. Method 1, method 2 to see what I'm going to do. Now, for method 1, how do I know a student is passed or failed? Well, the way that we use it here is, I can say and, I believe the and was easier, and this one to be greater or equal to 50, 
and this one to be greater or equal to 50 if both of them there then this means a student passed isn't it this means a student passed what I will do if a student passed I will find average so I'm gonna find use average function look this time I'm using function average function average of what average of the for this student average for Harry look this time if this logic is true we're gonna find average but what if it is not true we're gonna write must take reset must take reset we're gonna close the parenthesis before entering before pressing enter logical test it's and if this is greater than 50 this is greater than 50 both of them true a student means pass and in a case of pass what do I do I do average in the case if it's fail I'm writing must take reset exam does this student pass the fail one you see that it takes must take reset only two pass I have it and that's it in method two it's much easier but this is I'm gonna I'm gonna teach you something I can depend this if function on the result of this one here what I can say if this result here look I already do a if function here or this one doesn't matter any of them they're using it the same if this function is equal to look I'm using equal here if it's equal to I'm using text here pass <coughs> I'm checking the whatever is inside here look I don't know what is it I don't know what is it I will check this one as if inside here that's what i6 means i6 means whatever is inside here will be compared to pass if this is pass then I'm gonna go for the average if not we're gonna write must take reset Now I can go for two more solution, but that will be long enough. No need it. I mean, I can rearrange the or and a different way, and I'm closing the parentheses. Now this time, look at the logic I have it. The logic here, I'm comparing something with text. If I compare something with text, because pass is text, I have to put it in quotation mark, and I'll say equal. I can know this big and smaller than pass. I've seen students they using greater than pass. You cannot say greater than Shahab. What does greater than Shahab mean? It's the name. You cannot say greater than something. So there is no greater than Harry or greater than Jack. A number can be, it's only equal can be used for text. Then press OK. I must get the same answer. So if something here changed, look, if this became 43, if this became fail, sure they're going to change both of them. The first one is checking the number, but the second one is checking the result here. Look, is this equal to pass? No. It's fail. It is. Fail is going away. That's how Excel is working. So, for the this is I6. Is it equal to pass? No. So, it's not going to come here. It's jumping here. Why? Because it is false. The false is going to go for the last one. This is how Excel is working there. So, you'll be able to do these things in any manner different ways I can change this one to be fail yes and rearranging these two so I have two more methods I can do it and you know what is it one here I use and I could use or here I use pass I could use fail I'm gonna just change the location for those two then let's continue C in column beside the requirement be write a function to count number of reset exam that a student has to take for those students who passed the two course write no reset now imagine that you have a lot of courses this is basically the coordinators using this way to see that how many how many reset exams they have now how do we know reset here 
if there is something smaller than 50 years now here we're using count function count function but remember in if in if the logic is the key if you know the logic then the rest is easy so make sure first you spend some time on the logic to see what is the logic you're preparing it then you're going to make it easy look I can solve C in multi way in multi way but I'm just gonna explain one of them the rest I will leave it for you let's say that I'm starting with if look since I used if a lot I'm not gonna go for to prepare that flowchart but if you don't know still new prepare the flowchart to see what you're doing it or write it somewhere down do not just jump in do not dive in because you don't know too much about if diving in you don't know what you're doing if the things I'm explaining it's clear for you feel free to dive in and do things but you know what you do you must check the things that you have it but if you're not sure what you do we go for the flow chart prepare something if it is like this is gonna come here if not come here then you know what you're doing now for me the logical test I know if a student fail, he has a reset, yes? That's it. If a student passed, there is no reset for him. Because what does the question say is that? It says that, write a function to count the number of reset exam that the student has to take. And for those students who passed the two course, write no reset. So I'm, I'm going to check again pass. I'm going to check pass. I'll say if this one again is equal to pass, this is the easiest one. I could even check here check with this one I say if this is equal to must take reset I know what I'm doing I can even relate it to this one so I have a lot of way to do it but this is the easiest one also if a student pair pass I mean if the result here if the result inside here is equal to this four letters pass then I know that it is no reset so no reset I could side I could write zero as well but this isn't right no reset but what if it is not pass? Remember, if this is not true, it means that the result is not the result of this one is not pass. The result is fail. So if the result is fail, I have to count the reset exam. Now the question is here: which count function I must use? Because here I supposed to count if it is smaller than 50, isn't it? I cannot just use count because count is going to give me both of them. For example, this student is failed, yes, but well, the reason will be only for chemistry, not sorry for the math, not for chemistry. The chemistry he passed, but the fail is due to what? Due to the math. So he has only one. And what? How did I check? I check that if it is less than fifty. So I have to use for count if. In count if, this is the range. I'm checking both of them, both of them, and the criteria is what? The criteria is if it is smaller than 50 and this is the criteria I have there reminder of count if count if now this is gonna end up the if function I have it here look this is the logic test if the value which I found in the first requirement if it is pass then the student has no reset but if this logic if this logic is not true not true what does it mean means fail fail is gonna go here and here what does it do it's gonna count between those two if they are smaller than 50 and it's gonna give me one day let's see for the rest of them you see that this is no reset so only one passed this guy Charlie the rest of them they have reset this has two reset yes check two reset and this has only one reset because one of them is above one this has two reset those have one reset now here you realize that the blank was not counted as zero in the count if in the count if blank it's not if I put zero here yes that's gonna be two but since it's blank blank it's not reset blank is gonna make up this in our school is the same way by the way I don't know if you know what is the difference between reset and makeup reset you did the exam you failed it in makeup you haven't done it it's basically we call this on makeup now look at here this count if count if it does not count the blank as zero 
you only see one value and it's smaller than, smaller than 50 and it's going to tell me one receipt we have it here so this guy Thomas has a receipt for chemistry and has a makeup for math 102 this is if you change something here sure everything automatically will update themselves believe me you'll be able to do this one in many more ways many more ways can be used to solve this one but I need you to find them I need you to find them and have confidence how do you know they're correct each of them like if you solve it differently just use method one method two method three and all of them is gonna give you similar answer I believe for C you can have more than six seven solutions there so remember that there is no only one solution in if you have a versatility a lot of way to find solution you just have to find one for me it's enough just find one I'll be pleased now for the last one the last one it will be the end of the video and the end of this week for the oh we have E also sorry for D it says that in the column beside C write a function to count number of makeup exams that the student can take now makeup exam is only for those students who hasn't done an exam I mean is that a blank cell that's what does it mean makeup exam is for only for the students who hasn't done an exam which means blank for the student who did both exam write no makeup now here I need to see that now, how do I know if a student did both exams now I cannot say pass or fail yes it's not about pass or fail here look this is pass this is fail but this student does not have any makeup so how can I check a student is eligible eligible for makeup or not this is the logic here yes because the logic the logic here for us it's important I'm gonna use something come to my mind I don't know maybe maybe there's something in the solution in the different in the lecture notes maybe something comes to your mind to see how do you know a student or we have a blank cell remember this is dealing with a blank cell yes no Let's write it down. I'll write if function. Now, if you pass the logic, the rest is easy. That's the problem. The logic is the problem. How do I check that? No. By the way, can I solve this one without if? Can I solve this one without if function? I can solve without the function, but by two steps why because what do I want to do I have two output one output is I have to write no makeup I can use this one with blank cell yes so I'm gonna show you how can I how can I use some words or something a result for this one can I use count blank count blank count blank it tells me if there is any blank or not yes that's gonna be zero there's one here yes now zero what does it mean zero means that there is no blank no makeup yes then I can write this is the easiest one I can do it if if the result of here is equal to zero what does it mean it means no makeup no makeup but if the, the, the result is not zero maybe one two so it's gonna be there it's going to be the answer I can use count blank again here count blank I'm gonna show you something much easier but let's just use count blank for now count blank then I'm gonna close the parenthesis so there is the count blank I can use this way and it tell me no makeup here this guy does not have any makeup and if I double click for all of them there is only one student and this student has a makeup it's only this one why because it's empty if I make this one empty yes there is a makeup appearing here two empty two makeup so this case this is how does it work why what I use I use count blank here I could use I could use something instead of count blank here since I already calculated the count blank, so I already calculated the count blank. 
I could just simply click on this one. Now, this is a way that it's useful for if function. I will say that if q6, q6, I know what this means. It's a count, it's count blank. If this is equal to zero, it means no blank. If not, just take the number. That's what does it mean. I mean that when I say value false is equal to q6, it means that if it is not zero, bring the number for me here. And instead of rewriting the count blank, I could do it this way and I will get the same result. Because why? This is already count blank. So when you see Q6, inside Q6, what I wrote it, instead of writing this one back there, I can just simply write Q6. It means that I wrote it back here. That's what does it mean. This is one way to do it. Let's say this does not come to your mind. Let's say this does not come to your mind. So how can I solve this, pro this problem without it? Let's say this idea. Now, I can just directly start with count blank. I can say that, look at this logic. Count, count blank. I said I can use function as well, yes, for the logic. Count blank, if the count blank is equal to zero, I'm still using the same idea, yes, but I'll directly put the count blank inside the function. I was if the count blank is equal to zero, then no makeup. No makeup. But if it is not equal to zero, then I will use the count blank again to find the solution there. Now, if you check here, the first one is the logic, and the logic is three part. First, I'm going to check if there is any blank. If there is no blank, I will say no makeup. But if this is not equal to zero, what does it mean? It means that there is a blank cell, and the blank cell is not going to go for here. It's going to go for false because it's not equal to zero. It will not be equal to zero. So if it's not equal to zero, it will be false. And in a false, I will retake the count blank calculation, and it's going to tell me the number there. I must get the same answer. I don't know for now. This is going to come to my mind. I cannot use greater than zero. Greater than zero. I can use something else. Let's share something else. That one will be, how do I check blank? I can use OR function. Look at this way of doing it. OR function. This one equal to blank. You remember blank, yes? So I'm saying any of them, if it is blank, or this one is blank, this means blank. So I'm checking that whether this there is a blank cell here or a blank cell here. If any of those true, I'm going to use count blank. And the count blank is going to solve the problem for me. If not, if I don't have, if, look, this is or, yes. If this is blank, it's going to come here. If this is blank, it's going to come here. If both blank, is going to come here. Is none of them blank? None of them blank means no makeup. No makeup. I could solve it in the same manner. Sorry, the parenthesis, I didn't close it. Closing the parenthesis here. Then check to see that I have one logic inside here. There is one logic here. There is a value of true and a value of false. Please make sure you're always checking before pressing enter. So three values I have it. Just click after the parenthesis of the if then click here this is the logic to make sure it's correct this is the value of true and this value of false and i have to get the same result back there you realize that i have multi solutions to solve the same problem all depends on what the logic so however you are arranging the logic it's up to you but you realize that the output are still the same. Yes, count blank, no makeup. But the logic is the one that you're placing it and adjusting it accordingly. Make it easy for yourself. Try to do it whatever you want. But I need you, your brain to work for any kind of logic. Like to, to prepare logics for the same question. So I needed to solve, to find different methods to solve those problems. Believe me, in that way, you will be able to have a good understanding how to work with a function because remember the logic is the key now the last question we have it is easy it says that 
in the bottom of each course write the function to see if the average of the course is greater or equal than 50 or if it is less than 50 use it is greater or equal than 50 and it is less than 50 so we're gonna just check is the average if the average is above 50 or not I can simply do it in this manner here I put it under it so it's equal to if I can use average if average of the course is greater or equal to 50 if the average of the course is greater or equal to 50 then I'm gonna type the way that is type it is write it it is it is greater or equal to 50 this is between quotation mark is text yes it's text if it is not I can just write it it is it is less than 50 and quotation mark because it's text hit enter it's gonna tell me it's less than 50 I can use auto filling like this yes this is working yes why look at it the selection is gonna come here the rest is okay yes the average of this one is greater than 50 this one it is less than 50 this was the last one it says that or less than 50 use it is I use instead of text I use symbols it is less than 50 so we used here what do we use I believe that is not something so use the logic here is a function compared with something by the way you could find the average before if you don't like this way find the average before with the average here I mean the average of this one and then the average of this one then instead of here instead of putting the average inside the if function I can just simply this one this is already the average yes and it will be the same answer you realize that I could place the function outside the average is outside and instead of writing this one inside here I just write g13 g13 is already average g13 is already average so I don't need to put the average here I put the average outside then look if the average here changes this guy got 100 and this guy got 69 so you're gonna get for example the answers if this is still not let's make this one 89 yes 57 it is above average or above 50 this is how we do a function thanks for watching